Hi, this is Paul Anderson. Um, I get lots of questions about how I put together my uh, educational screencast. And so what I thought I'd do is just kind of show you making one and how I do it and then kind of use that as a model um, to show you how to do one of your own. And so um, the software that I'm going to run is threefold. Uh, the first thing I'm in is something called Keynote. This is similar to PowerPoint on a PC. And what it does is it allows you to set up your presentation. Uh, the next piece of software I'm using is something called OmniDazzle. And what that does is it allows me to write on the screen using a uh, pen. And then the last thing is ScreenFlow. And so if you're ever making one of these, what you have to do is actually capture what's going on on the screen. ScreenFlow does that. And it also is able to copy uh, or capture this video and the voice that's coming through right now. And so those are the three pieces of software, presentation software, pen software, and then finally screen capture software. And so the first thing I do is I actually put together a screen uh, presentation. Just like I'm going to lecture in class, I put down a, uh, my ideas and kind of organize those into uh, a uh, sequence of slides. Um, on each of those slides, I leave a space so I can actually insert video there when I get to the editing part. Um, and so let's take a stab at this. And so, hi, I'm Paul Anderson and welcome to Educational Screencast Walkthrough. Um, the hardware that I'm looking at in front of me is sitting right here. I've really got four pieces of hardware. First one is a computer. I'm running a MacBook. Um, I've also got a microphone on the top that allows me to um, pick up a better kind of sounding voice than the one that's built into the computer. I also have a webcam. The webcam sits right there. Um, so it's picking up the video that you see. And then finally, the fourth thing that I have is a uh, tablet. So let's talk a little bit about each of those in more detail. Um, the computer I'm using is a MacBook. Um, it's, it's a 2010 MacBook. Nice thing about it is it's running the most up-to-date system software 10.6. Um, the nice thing about that is most of the new screen capture software requires uh, pretty up-to-date software. And so you have to run, at least on the Mac side, a 10.5 in order to use most of the screen capture video. Um, PC, you want to run, you know, you essentially want to have a webcam if you can built in, and then you want to have uh, the up-to-date um, software and I'm sure that you could run this on Linux as well I'm just not familiar with that so again if you've got a new computer that's gonna work great for this next thing you need is a webcam um, I don't spend a lot of money on that it's just built into the computer itself it sits right here um, lots of times the video I'll actually make them smaller within the screencast and so I don't feel like I need a really high quality video camera I'm sure you could use an external video camera if you wanted to as well but I'm happy with the one that's built in it's also nice as I move the computer around during the day I don't have to worry about hooking up a camera um, next thing that I, I purchased was a microphone if you've seen some of my other screencasts you'll notice that I used to wear these really big dorky headphones and the reason why it wasn't so I could hear but so it would position the microphone very close to my mouth and so um, I kind of did away with that when I bought this this is a Samson go mic um, the nice thing about it is it clips right here on the top of my computer and so it picks up my voice as I talk towards the uh, towards the video camera and I think it does a nice job of picking it up I think it's one of those things when you are watching a video you can't tell but you may like one video over another and one of the big things is that it just has higher quality sound um, and so I think it's worth spending a little money to get a nice microphone. But I had to get one that didn't really get in my way. Um, the last thing that I've added this year is a tablet. This is a graphics tablet. Nice thing about it is that you can actually write with a certain amount of precision on the screen. Um, and if I were to try to use just my mouse or my trackpad, I wouldn't be able to get that kind of clarity. Um, the other nice thing about it is it has these buttons. And so I can assign different functions for each of these buttons. So these ones on the top I use to actually advance uh, or go backwards in the, in, the, in the slideshow. I use this one to bring up that writing software. And then I use this one to actually erase. And so if I hit that button right there, it erases everything that I actually just wrote. Okay, now let's get to the software. Um, software side, what you need to start out with is presentation software. And so the software I'm using again is Keynote. Um, it's nice for the Mac. It really works well with 
um, iPhoto and bringing in things and resizing. Um, but I could just as well be using PowerPoint if I'm on a PC or even on a Mac for that matter. And so that's the first thing you need. And, and think out how you want to talk. Um, what sequence of steps do you want to go through? And then lay it out in Keynote. Um, next thing I use is screen capture. Um, screen capture software I use is something called Screen Flow. And so that's actually recording everything that I do right now. Um, and you will be able to see it in just a minute or so. Um, and so again, it captures what's on the screen and then the video coming from the webcam as well. And then the last thing I use is drawing software. And so what I'm using is something called OmniDazzle. Um, I've looked at some other ones, but this one seems to function the best. It just allows me to scribble on the screen and then quickly erase it. Okay, uh, I've done this for a little bit, a little while, and I've come up with my list of things that I think would help you. Um, first thing I tried was adding, because I thought it was kind of boring, my presentation, so I, I had music in the background. I found that that's a really, really, really bad idea. Um, music is just going to be a distraction. And so maybe a little bit at the beginning, but then it should just be voice. Next one, voice input. After you're done making your video, I usually make sure that that goes to mono. If, you, if you're moving from side to side when you're talking, it becomes really distracting. And so I can actually uh, take all that audio and then squeeze it into one mono track because our voice is mono, it's not stereo. Um, next thing I found is that you should include your face. Um, a lot of kids uh, in my class really respond well to seeing my face and they thought it was kind of creepy when they couldn't see it. And so I think that's been something good. Um, and if you think about it, all the videos on YouTube that, uh, that are popular is just somebody sitting in front of a webcam talking. Next one, zoom in. In other words, it's really hard to see the screen. Uh, and especially when you have text on the screen at all. And so I try to zoom in as, as much as I can to give the uh, viewer kind of a good shot at what you're trying to talk about. Um, the next one, I try to keep my videos to 10 minutes or less. Um, this was, uh, it was, it was created by YouTube, this 10 minute limit. And uh, it ended up being a nice thing for me. If my videos go much longer than that, I think it's just too long and people tend to get bored. Um, even when I watch videos, man, if I see something that's eight or nine minutes, I'm willing to watch it, but if it gets much longer than that, I'm just not gonna cash in. Okay, and then the last one is that I just think YouTube is really cool. Um, so I put all my videos on YouTube. You're gonna have the biggest viewership. They do a nice job of letting you kind of customize how your videos are gonna be displayed on your site. And uh, it's just the biggest fish in the pond, and so I, I, I love YouTube. Okay, so after I've done with a video like that, now what I'll do is screen flow is I'm going to get out of this and so I'm going to stop recording and when I do that my face is going to disappear and I'm going to have to show you what it looks like on the inside. Okay now that I've quit ScreenFlow it shows me this uh, video editor and so I can go back and look at myself and the video I just shot so we can see some of that. together my uh, educational screencast and so what I thought I'd do is... So now I can just edit and so if I want to for example take this video and put it right here in the middle of the screen and maybe resize it down a little bit just kind of it's easy to just move that and how I or if I want to go out here let's say farther right here at this point in the video I'm actually going to show you the things down on the bottom of my screen so what I could do play that so now I could zoom into this at the bottom so I'm going to click here add a video action and now I'm just going to simply zoom in to the bottom. And so you can see the things on the bottom. And then maybe I want to move my head up a little bit. So I'm going to add a video action to that. Move my head up here. And then I can play it like uh, the that. The first thing I'm in is something called Keynote. This is similar to PowerPoint. I can also do things that I talked about before. Like I go to my audio and I could mix it to, uh, to mono. Um, I can also do things like increase the size of the cursor um, so I can make that down here, make that mouse pointer bigger when it's on the screen. And I can do uh, other things like add text, I can add images, I can add video like that. And so if we go back and look at what it looks like now at this point of your own. And so um, the software that I'm going to run is threefold. Uh, the first thing I'm in is something called Keynote. Okay, now once I have the video the way that I want it, the neat thing about ScreenFlow is I can simply publish it to YouTube. I put in my information and my password, sign in, and it's going to take care of compressing the video, uploading it to YouTube, and then I'm pretty much done. And so that's ScreenFlow and that's my walkthrough. 
uh, of screencasting. I hope that's helpful.